Stop the cap. I'm going to repeat what I said in another video. Uh, that video was about a different topic. But I'm going to repeat what I said in that video because I realize I do need to make a separate video. Um, and I'll talk about the YouTube shenanigans later. Um, I'm just going to upload some of my more recent videos. Probably not all of them. Um, you know, but I'm just going to upload the more recent more recent ones on this channel for the time being um because like i said uh, many times over me personally i'm pretty much done with the gender war you know i'll speak on it from time to time um you know to remind people because i see a lot of young people in their early 20s making videos, you know, you got a whole bunch of grifters and whatnot. They want to keep the gender war going. I do see people with genuine concern, but it's a new generation. And unlike when I came online, th there was no money to be made. So money has corrupted the conversation because again, you know, economy's bad and people are trying to get the bag. And, you know, if you either a go up there and tell black women what they want to hear you know, or B, just have a back and forth banter between black men and black women with no real solutions on the horizon. Uh, that'll get you a bunch of views. You know, it's kind of like, you know, the black conservatives that like to go up there and throw black people underneath the bus. And, um, you know, for a bag, you know, we saw this with Candace Owens and Brandon Tatum and you know, Anthony Brian Logan and, you know, what Amazing Lucas used to be on when he was in the sunken place. But um, some revelations, you know, have come up, you know, recently. I forget exactly what sparked it, but basically the key word here is autonomy. Captain Solo found a quote from Oprah Winfrey, of all people. Uh, where Oprah was asked why she didn't marry Stedman. And, you know, this tools rolls right into the Ebony K. Williams and her going, you know, becoming a single mother alone and, you know, didn't want to tell us about the two week vacations in the south of France uh, that she turned down. Right. And the fact that she was previously married before and it's like, OK, why didn't that work? Um, and, you know, some people have even pointed out, um, you know, her on, I don't know what it was, the housewives of Atlanta or something. And she was like, I don't know. She was on some arrogant shit on there. Even when she went on tour, a, she was up there talking about, I mean, she goes and acknowledges, you know, where the preference and then goes on tour a and talks about, I'm a, I gotta know that I'm the baddest bitch in the room. Go, go pull the clip up. She says it right during the interview that she needs to be with a man that 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 knows that she's the baddest bitch in the room. How can you defeat colorism and you're a light skinned woman and you got to be the baddest bitch in the room? How does that work? What is it when a dark skinned woman walks in the room? Suddenly you become woke and 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 you're going to give up the 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 baddest bitch in the room crown. Like, get the fuck out of here, Ebony. You know, but um. Ebony K. Williams, you know, that whole interview that she did with Melissa Ford on, I think that was own, um, there was an interview that she did and Melissa Ford was up there and like two other light skinned women and where she talked about how men are not looking for a, a, a peer, you know, the pee pee goes do, do, do. Right. And, you know, it's like, you know, I mean, Cap is, he's been talking about, you know, that interview and then just you know we're like compiling just everything going all the way back to cat Fu, don nicoleon i have the first say so and the last say so um you know i'm trying to think you know who just just you know this this statement coming from oprah basically and i got away from myself oprah basically said the reason why she didn't marry stedman was because she couldn't have the lifestyle that she had built for herself, right? And this goes right into Ebony K. Williams and goes right into all the rhetoric that we've heard from all these women. You know, even um, what's the episode? Um, the uh, the um, 
damn, I can't think of what his name is, what his channel is. Um, you know, the guy that goes, you know, the Kevin Samuel started this discussion. It's his name is escaping me right now. Uh, we need to talk. So we need to talk. I think it's episode 57 and episode 27. This black woman that's on there. And, you know, she says one of the most ridiculous things we've ever heard. She was like, well, I'm going to have my house and he's going to have his house. It's like, how did, how the hell does that work, right? I mean, all, all these sort of ideas. And basically what it comes down to is autonomy. And one of the things that, you know, Cap, you know, we were had like going back and forth having this discussion and Cap was like, well, this explains, you know, all these, all these damn kids out of wedlock. And I was like, what do you mean it explains all the kids out of wedlock? He was like, autonomy. And he just kept saying it. He's like, autonomy, autonomy, autonomy. And I'm like, OK. And <clears throat> what it comes down to is a black woman having a baby by a black man does not affect her autonomy. That's why you, that's why we got this 61 percent of black women are mothers, which is 13.4 million and only 9.2 million black men. Forty six percent are fathers. Right. Black women are indeed sharing men. I mean, I mean, I mean, a thousand percent they're sharing men. Meaning, and then I'm not saying every woman is sharing men. We already know 30 percent of, I think, 29 percent of black women are married. I think it might have went down to 28, but anywhere from 28 to uh, 30 percent of black women are married. About the same number of black men are married. I think it's like anywhere from 30 percent to 33 percent, but ignore the percentages um, because these percentages fluctuate based on the population. Remember, percentage is a representation, you know, of a, a, a whole number. Or, or I, I guess that's the way. That, uh, uh, there's probably a better way to say that, but it's not the actual whole number. So when you say the actual whole number, that lets you know what the numbers are. Like, so in any way, um, <clears throat> Caps kept saying. Um, autonomy, autonomy. And basically it's like example, let's talk about future, you know, uh, future of the rapper. So future has from, and I can't even keep up with future, but I think he has eight baby mamas and eight children. He might have a new baby mama on the way. I don't know, nor do I care, but future is a perfect example because future, it facilitates a situation where a black woman can get the baby, she can get the bag, and without having to deal with patriarchy. She doesn't have to deal with the patriarchy. Why? Because a guy like Future, right? A guy who's preoccupied, right? Even though the women will come online, oh, they'll complain, oh, black women are not getting married, oh, they're single moms, oh, it's because they had to, yada, 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 bullshit. No, they want the bag, they want the baby, and they don't want the patriarchy. The perfect individual to get with is somebody like Future. Because, you know, seven-eighths of the time, you know, he's not he's not with you. Even if Future was trying to be the best dad ever and was spending an equal amount of time with each mom and each child, right? If you're any one of those eight women... Only one eighth of the time are you going to deal with future seven eighths of the time. He is somewhere else. You see now future is the ideal situation. That's why you see all these women lined up to get with Cam Newton and NBA young boy and country Wayne and, and, uh, and, and rappers like future. That's why you see these type of dynamics because they have resources. All these women are not interested in getting married. With all these matriarchal belief systems. Now, I got to qualify this because, yes, the belief systems started started with black men not being able to secure gainful employment due to racism and white supremacy in the economic marketplace. Right. Because with that, I mean, if you don't have gainfully employed men, you, you just can't have a patriarchy, period. It, it's done. Okay, you see the white guys going through it right now. It is done. If you ain't, if you talk about 
I don't care how much Judeo Christianity you want to sprinkle on it. I don't care how much white Jesus you want to sprinkle on it. I don't care how much Holy Bible you want to sprinkle on it. If men are not gainfully employed, there is no patriarchy. It's a wrap. Okay. And some of the hardcore feminists, you know, they know that they're like, Hey, if I can get the bag myself, I don't have to negotiate my survival with a man. I don't have to abide by his rules and his expectations and yada, 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 and so on and so forth. Right. Then you throw in the welfare state, this, you know, coming in and women can get, you know, a minuscule amount of resources, but resources nonetheless from the state. So that's less reason why the woman has to deal with the man, especially when you get into housing. And the fact that there are there is housing to be acquired for women and children, but not for men, you see. And even in the event of divorce, like one of the things that Captain Solo has pointed out about, you know, even, you know, back in the 1970s, you know, when, you know, the stepdad situation was more prevalent. A lot of times, you know, if the man, you know, bought the house or the uh, the the woman and the man bought the house together, whatever it may be. Uh, the man would, you know, he didn't want his kids to be out there in the street. He would go and get a futon and go stay in a one bedroom apartment somewhere or, or go somewhere else. But he wanted his kids to actually have a solid roof over his head. The problem is, is right off top that 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 facilitates matriarchy, because if she now she's got the house. He doesn't have a house. He doesn't have a foundation. He living in a one bedroom apartment somewhere. So then she goes back on the dating market. She enters the dating market and she has the house. So the next dude, the 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 the, the, the simp, the step daddy, whatever you want to call him, she's already got a foundation. He goes, meets her. She's let's just say she still looks good. She's, you know, 32 or something like that. He comes in moves into her shit and you know the leverage is already heavily in her favor at that point you know and and that's just one of the ways in which you just end up with this situation of you know having you know more matriarchal households you know starting with a divorce cuz you cuz you got to keep in mind that black people started with high rates of marriage it didn't start with you know, uh, single single moms being the majority of the black community at the turn of the 20th century, black people were getting married at like 90 percent, like over 90 percent. You can go and Google it. OK, over 90 percent. So there was a transition from the nuclear family into normalizing single motherhood, which happened somewhere you know, in the 70s and in the 80s, you can go and watch that The Vanishing Black Family video. And those girls in 1986 that were talking about, the, you know, the, or at least one of them in particular said, you know, the black man is not substantial to the family. And all those girls that didn't raise their hand when they were asked, would you want your baby daddy to come back in your life? Like that one guy with the leather jacket, I think he did. De he's dead. He died. Some people said he died. But in any event, um... You know, he had four, I think he had six children by four different women. Six children by four different women. Now, you know, black women will come through and they'll act like it was some big secret. Oh, we didn't know. Bullshit. Bullshit. There ain't no way you're not going to know that a dude has, especially you're all in the same community. You're all in the same vicinity. You all went to the same high school. You don't know that bitch over there. Bullshit. Bullshit. You knew you knew that he was fucking with, you know, the other chick that he got pregnant. You knew. OK. And see, the thing is, is when you get into running away from men that have stability. And again, we have, you know, you know, women that have been in this conversation that were literally told no by an established black man, you know, that, no, I'm not giving you a baby and then ran off and got with a dustier dude. You know, who thought, you know, oh, I'm laying some pipe down. Oh, she's feeling me. All she wants is a baby. And and his stupid ass went and got her pregnant. And then now she can run around the Internet bad mouthing him. You know, and, and you know, that's what that situation is. And, and you know, I, I used to, you know, get mad at Cap because he would try to, you know, hold these guys, you know, accountable 
you know, th talking about men thinking with their dick. And I'm like, yeah, to a degree, I do understand where you're coming from. But to me, I see it as a form of manipulation when you have a person that that is that uses a person that's not the sharpest tool in the drawer. Like every every man is not the same. Some men are way more capable than other men. Some men are way more intelligent than other men and other men are less intelligent. And if the intelligent man says, no, I'm not doing this or I'm not partaking participating in this because of x y and z and then the woman goes off and then gets with the simpleton you know what i mean you can't come into the space and be like ah these black men ah these niggas ah no 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 bitch no 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 you know what i mean like that's like that's like a dude bragging about getting with some chick oh i got some ass from a chick with down syndrome like like no you don't get credit for that that's not you know, oh i was spitting game to somebody with down syndrome you know what i mean like you go out there and you get with the with the most simplest mindest minded hood dude and 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 and, and, and then you want to play the victim nah 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 these women and that's a that's a whole nother conversation but the whole way that black women play the victim when it comes to all the decisions that they make you know, I mean, uh, the infantilizing of women is 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 just profound on the Internet and everybody does it. Men do it. Women do it. But but like it's crazy how in one breath everybody will say that women are capable and are equal human beings. And, 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 and I am a feminist and hear me roar. And then when it comes to women doing evil or negative things, it turns into. A, a situation where we infantilize her. And so anything that she does that's bad or evil or negative is it, it, she didn't do it underneath her own volition. She did it because she had no other choice. She was backed into a corner. Bullshit. Bullshit. No, she did what she wanted to do. Again, I've, I have continued to ask the question. When these women go out here and they talk about all oh, these men that got multiple baby mamas and all this other shit, which is a minority of men. It's a minority. You know, there's 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 more black women that have kids with uh, uh, more black women that have kids with multiple men than men that have kids with multiple women. The difference is like when you get into like the upper the, the extremes of like because you can have like situations like Future or Desmond Hatchet where you have one man and you have 33 women. Right, the extremes, but the um, but but your 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 average man, you know, they don't they don't get that. You, I mean, you only got forty six percent of black men that are fathers, and then and then of the forty six percent of that nine point two million, you got to take out the ones you know that are married and only with one woman, right? Then that leaves you the ones that are married and then have you know more than one woman. Right. And then you got the ones that are the problematic ones that are not not married more a little not married to more than one woman, but they were married at one time, had a baby with one woman and maybe got an outside kid. You know, people like Dennis. OK, the, the Dennis is a category. But then you got another group which is the group that is the problematic group that everybody likes to point fingers at, which are the ones that got multiple kids by multiple women, right? And they're the most visible. They're the they're the ones they're the ones that you see. But like I said, majority of black women are getting becoming 42% of the black women who become mothers are becoming mothers under the age of 20. There's no stability in vast majority of those relationships, which is why they fall apart. So now she's still, she's 20. She had the baby at 19. Now she's 22, 23, 24. She's still young. She still looks good. She's going to be out here dating. That's why you see all these women that have kids up on these balloon shows, right? And, oh, I, you know, I'm 24 years old and I got two kids already. Like, God damn, damn. You know, at, like at 22 years old, you know what I was doing? Graduating college. That's what I was doing. You know what I mean? I was graduating. And you don't already popped out two kids? That's wild to me. You know? And, and, and not only that, two kids with no stability, just just you just, you know, just a byproduct of fucking. You know, oh, it feels good. And and then 
now you got this person that's here. And then these women piggyback on all these classic, you know, color purple, you know, type of narratives. At the end of the day, what these women want and what these conversations are all about is autonomy. Ebony K. Williams did what she wanted because she wanted to have and maintain her own autonomy. Having a child does not undermine black women's autonomies. Nine times out of the 10, they're going to get the kid anyway. If she moves to Cali, she's going to take the kid with her anyway. And it, I mean, Catherine Eden, and I said this in another video, she talked about this, which was the fact that men, you know, there's no certainty that the man is going to see, you know, the child. I see a lot of women, they be co they co-sign this bullshit. And I'm like, you do realize that if you have a son and your daughter-in-law, so to speak, gets a crack, hair in the crack of her ass, you won't see your grandchild. You do realize that. Right. Because y'all treat like with mothers and children like you, they're inseparable and to hell with the father. You do realize when you co-sign that type of dynamic, if you have a son and 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 his baby mama doesn't like you, guess who won't be seeing their grandkids? You know, what I mean, this is why it's stupid the way that people were like try to have these sort of multi-generational gender war, you know, I'm team blue, I'm team, you know, uh, uh, pink, you know, when it comes to that, because I'm like, you know, if you marry your wife, you got a 50, 50% chance of having a son or a daughter. And then you got another 50, 50% chance that you're going to have a male, uh, 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 you know, uh, or female grandchild. Right. So, so the idea that, you know, oh, we're only, going to co-sign what's what we what appears to be beneficial to one sex or not is the dumbest thing ever but this is what people do the only reason we talk about you know a patriarchy and male leadership is because it's entirely too much work for men to build and maintain and defend the physical infrastructure of society and not be in control especially when women are horrendous when it comes to accountability y'all are horrendous you know, like I said, when when I you know talk to that woman about the log cabin in the woods, what what happens if you know men build a log cabin and a bunch of women burn it down? And she was like, throw them in jail. I'm like, that was not the point. the The point is to get them to rebuild the log cabin that they burned down. You know what I mean? And 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 she and I mean without hesitation. Well, can't you get the the men to do it again? Can't I mean they already built it the first time? Can't they go off and build it again? And then real talk, like if women were gonna go off and build what they destroyed, it's not gonna be the men's, you know, uh, standards, right? It's not. They're not. Well, the women aren't in the habit or practice of building structures. So if they burn it down, not only are you gonna be building it again, but now you got to make rules. It, to, to make sure that they don't go in there with the box of mass, matches and burn it down again. This is where, the, you know, the patriarchy comes into play. You know, on top of the fact that women get pregnant, you know, if, if you've ever seen a pregnant woman with a toddler, it, it, a man, I mean, just, I mean, anybody talking shit, all you got to do is watch a pregnant woman with a toddler, you know, trying to like do something, anything. They're so vulnerable. It's not even funny. It's not even funny. You know, I, I don't know where every woman got this idea that they're all Wonder Woman. and every, You're going to need a strong man when you're fucking pregnant. And who knows how many damn kids you're going to have. You want you want to have three kids? You're going to be down for the majority of a decade. That's just the reality. Career-wise, everything, you will be down. If you want to spread them kids out about a year and a half, two years apart, and you want to have three kids... You're going to be down for the better part of a decade, period. You're not going to be able to compete with men that don't have to have babies and just go out here and, you know, run full sprint in corporate America if they can even get in Amer corporate America and, and be paid enough to even support a family. Again, that's that's a separate conversation. But I'm just saying, you know, like the the way that the world is going right now, it's fucking Delulu is just absolutely Delulu. But um. What else was I going to say about the situation? Um, yeah, it just comes down to autonomy. You know, I mean, plain and simple. And no matter how you want to dice it up, what these women want, they, I mean, they, they basically want it all. They want to be able, they want the benefits of patriarchy. 
devoid of leadership. And I've said that numerous times. But you really got to understand what autonomy means. A woman, if she marries you and you're a traditional man and you're a patriarch and you're like, look at me, I'm offering all of this stuff. That's great. That's fantastic. But at the end of the day, a woman, you know, th these modern women, like they don't want to they don't want to follow you. They don't want to abide. They don't want to do any of that. This ain't got nothing to do with colorism. This ain't got nothing to do with the amount of dust that's in the room. You know what I mean? When Oprah made her statement, she's with Stedman. Stedman got millions of dollars. Stedman doing his thing. Yeah, I know Oprah's a billionaire, but Stedman, ain't, Stedman could, go, could go out here, you know, with, with, with all of his wealth, and he's he's literally kicking ass, and he's in the, the freaking 99 percentile, okay? Stedman didn't need Oprah, okay? But the reality is, is Oprah recognized that, you know, getting married... Right. And then having to live up to the patriarchal expectations they see that's the game that they don't want to play. This is what Aisha K. Faines was on with Women Love Power with her Women Love Power website. Go her, I think her website is still up. Go over there and read the pay, read the, the summary, you know, on that page of what she says on that page. You know, what 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 she talked about when she brought up Coco Chanel and, and Coco Chanel basically got rich by. You know, fucking with, with well-to-do men and then fucking taking their money. You know, and that was what basically what she was advocating for. Getting with well-to-do men, divorcing them, taking their money, and then going off and doing whatever the fuck they want to do. This is why no-fault divorce is horrendous. This is another reason why, you know, men don't want to get married. I'm so sick of the narrative being, oh, it's because men are dysfunctional and men are broken and this, that, and the third. And, and at the end of the day, it's like like there is no there's no reciprocity there's nothing women have taken everything out of the 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 realm of what men even want desire or even interested women don't even care they don't even care they think they're going to shame you into compliance that they're going to shame you into you know uh, uh you know playing a patriarchal role so that they can just take from you you know, I'm not trying to twist any woman's arm who does not want to be, you know, in a traditional relationship or marriage or patriarchy. If that's not what you want to do, that's not what you want to do. You know, and when it comes to all these arguments about black men dating outside the race, uh, if you don't want to play that game, if you're on the Ebony K. Williams tip, you know what I mean? Like, what is a man supposed to do? You're mad that they're going out there and getting with other races of women that do want to play that role, but here you here we have an entire culture where you don't you all don't want to play that play that role, and then you want to use you know these you know freaking uh, 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 legacy uh, 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 complaints, right? You want to use uh, I don't know the, the the freaking Danny Glover in the color purple and and talk about abuses shit that is not going down when it comes to you, right? I mean, again, I've even, I've showed the numbers. It's only like 500 black women that are getting killed a year. 2020 was an anomaly because of COVID and all the stress that people were getting uh, were happening during COVID, and black women's homicide rate jumped like by um uh by three times the rate because it went up to like some like uh I think like the high 1400s, like 1493 or something like that. But uh, on average. It's about 500. 500 women are killed every year out of 22 million black women. It's not, that's that's like 0.0000001%. It's retarded. It's retarded. Again, I know every life is precious, blah, 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 blah. We get all that. But again, same thing with like freaking gun control and mass shootings and shit like that. You know, mass shootings, rare situations. Rare situations. You're way more likely to get carjacked or or robbed than be killed in a in a strong arm robbery. I mean, a, in a in a mass shooting. You're way more like, and then depending on what type of dirt you're doing in the street, that increases your chances of getting robbed. Living in a poor area increases your chances of not excuse, not getting robbed, getting shot. But you know the reason why mass shootings, everybody's focused on that, is because it's random. You know, if I stay out of a bad area, I can avoid, you know, inner city crime. I can avoid being carjacked, staying out of bad areas. 
But mass shootings, you, you know, you can't really avoid that. I could be at the mall. I could be at the movie theater. I could be at the, you know, you know, on a on a at a football game somewhere, and all of a sudden you start hearing shots ring off, echoing and whatnot. Right, that's what freaks people out. But but you're not more likely to get killed in a mass shooting, you know, than you are to be killed uh, because somebody likes the car that you drive. You know, and they follow you home or they follow you home from the casino or some shit like that. Right. Home invasions, all that other stuff. You're way more likely to get shot in situations like that. But. um, You know, even watching uh, I brought this up in another video as well, talking about, you know, um, there's a clip of uh, Vivica A. Fox and she's talking about 50 Cent and basically saying 50 Cent was the one that got away. It, Vivica Fox is 11 years older than 50 Cent. And I remember when 50 Cent hollered, it was like whenever he won that award, early 2000s, and 50 Cent was up there and he was like, you know, I want to thank Vivica A. Fox for wearing that dress. You know what I mean? She was 40 at that time and, and or around 40 and 50 Cent was like 29. You know, so... um. You know, she talked about how, you know, you got to let a man be a man. This is like in some interview I found it on. I found it on uh, on uh, it was either Instagram or TikTok. You know, somebody had, you know, recorded it and then reposted it or whatever. I'll try to find the original or some of you all can put it in the description box. But I don't I have no clue what it was from. But she's just sitting there candidly talking about 50 Cent and talking about how he was the one that got away. Her net worth is three million. His net worth is 40 million. You know, and, um, you know, what is that about autonomy? I mean, plain and simple autonomy. You got to let a man, you know, be a man. No, because she she probably sat there and looked at 50 Cent and was like, ain't no way this young, this dude younger than me got it going on more than I got going on because I'm the Vivica A. Fox. You know who I am. I'm the baddest of bad. Yeah, yeah. She At that time, yeah, she was the baddest of bad. Okay? But now, you know, she's 60 years old. She's not the baddest of bad. But, you know, basically she was smelling herself and she fucked it up. She fucked it up. I mean, 50 Cent, where, where's the dust? There's no dust here. And and, and again, as, as we've you know tried to get people to talk about this, when you get away from the Ray Ray and Pookie arguments, all you're left with are scenarios and situations where you have you know, a black woman and a dude that's established trying to get with her, and you know, they they inevitably fuck it up. Because they want their autonomy. They want to do their own thing. They don't want the guy doing better than them. You know, and then this is the this is the blatant, this is the contradiction of it all. Because they sit there, oh, you know, we want men to do better, and there's just so much dust, and the black man gotta do better, and, and the black woman, she's carrying all this weight, and the black man gotta do better. And then when the men are doing better, the women don't like the power dynamic. They like being matriarchs. They like being strong and independent. They like all that shit. And then when we call them out on it, they come to the internet and then they deny and they swear up and down. No, no. The only reason I'm in the driver's seat is because, you know, uh, you know, the, the men failed because women being in leadership positions essentially due to the patriarchy is only acceptable when men fail. So they these women have to create a situation where men fail. I mean, I just got an argument with a woman not too long ago. Told her about the 54% of black men being childless and 61% of black men be, were mothers or black women were mothers. Man, she blew a gasket. She refused to accept. I'm like, go argue with the CDC. Why are you arguing with me? Again, and that report was had nothing to do with specifically targeting black women, not to mention the fact because it was about uh, uh, freaking teen pregnancy and, and poverty. And again, you can go to 2006 to 2010 or, or I think it's two, no, 2006 to 2000 and what, what is it? 
no, 2006 to 2000, I think it's 2006 to 2010, and then it's 2011 to 2014. And the black male, the men that ever birthed a child has not gone up above 50%. 49% is the highest that it was in, in those three CDC reports. You can try to go back before that and, you know, they didn't really keep the data the way that they should have kept the data. You know, it's all like ob ob obscure charts and whatnot that you can, can't even freaking read. But I'm saying those charts are actually, those last three reports are consistent and we're due for a new report in 2025. And you'll see once again, you know, and I imagine due to the economy and everything else, that number is going to drop. That number is going to drop to to 45, 44 percent of black men are fathers. That's what you're going to see. And black women at the lowest, I think it'll be is like 59 percent. But I think it'll help still be around uh, 59 to 61 percent. I think you're going to see the same numbers. Because, you know, like when it comes to women, you know, and and and, the, and them having babies, like there's a whole identity, you know, like even one of the women that commented in my comment section talking about, you know, who are you to deny a woman a motherhood? And I'm like, that's how you view it. I'm denying you your motherhood. Right. So you bring a child into the world without having resources so that you can experience motherhood. I mean, I don't have to get into how selfish what Ebony K. Williams is doing. I mean, it's insanely, profoundly selfish. But this is this is how these how these women think. You know, damn, you know, what the child actually needs from their father being there, you know, every day. You know, I mean, I mean, there's just so much that they're not getting from the father, you know, in real time, in real time. And that's going to have negative effects on the child. You know, I mean, then you got these this dynamic of uh, son husbands that go that goes on in the black community. These women that go off and you know they go and they get with dust and and and, and you know that's doomed to fail. Then they're a single mom and then they try to turn their sons into these son husbands. They try to get ro a romantic, you know, uh, a relationship from their sons, and then they charge their sons with the, with adult responsibilities when they're just a kid. You know, all this sort of emotional labor that they have to do for their mother. You know, what I mean, like the shit with Kevin Durant kissing his mom in the mouth. That's inappropriate. Why are you kissing your mom in the mouth? That no, we don't no, absolutely not. You know, but that's what happens when you end up with a situation where, you know, the boys are raised, you know, exclusively by they don't let them grow up. I've proven this with the with Lando Collins and and the whole situation and, and Gerald Willis and and um you know the mothers walking off because they, they wanted to pick a different university and the mothers wanted them to pick, right? The boy in the back of the car, I told you do Biden. I said pick Biden. You know what I mean? He's like, I will never do this again. You know what I mean? And then and then y'all like cry and complain about the outcome of black men and boys and all oh, they're all messed up and oh, they're not real men. And y'all don't want real men. Y'all want son husbands and you want like these worker bees that like, you know, do shit for the matriarchy, you know, what I mean? like like just worker drones. That's really what y'all want. You know, and, and, and that's why, I mean, Pookie is perfect for y'all. It makes so much sense now. He's I mean, Pookie is perfect, especially a rich Pookie. Oh, that's the ultimate. That's the ultimate because he's so tied up. With all the, the other kids and all the other responsibilities, you only got to see that nigga like once a month, if that. Once every two months, he'll show up, maybe bring some presents to the child, you know what I mean? And then and then disappear again, you know, and, and, and he's got the bag, right? You getting hella child support, right? You getting more than enough when it comes to child support. So, you know, I'm saying if you get you a rich pookie that I mean, rich pookie is are the ideal. You can't. I mean, I have ran scenarios in my head trying to figure out whether a black woman could get a better deal. I'm like, if her goal is autonomy, rich pookie is it.
Rich Pookie, she get the she's got the bag, she's got the baby, and none of the goddamn patriarchy. I'm like, damn. I'm like, oh yeah. You know, so so when people we used to ask the question, even Kevin Samuels used to ask this question. You know what I mean? Like, why aren't you married to your baby daddy? Like, why did you have two kids after, you know, you, you know, you uh you know got with this guy? Right? He used to ask the question, like, why aren't you married? But you had a kid, so let me get this right. He was good enough to have a kid by, but he's not good enough to marry? Like, bitch, that don't make any sense. You're not making sense. No, it makes perfect sense when you recognize that it's about them maintaining their autonomy. Because a woman can maintain autonomy by having a kid. She can't maintain her autonomy by being married to you. Because now she's got to live up to you know, patriarchal expectations and all that shit. And, you know, you know, you got, you got joint accounts and, you know, where you want to move and where you want to live, right? Because all he has got to live underneath one roof. And if he makes more money, then he's going to dictate, you know, where, uh, you know, where the location of the property is. He's going to dictate whether you get that deck with the jacuzzi outside. He's going to dictate whether you get those, uh, stainless steel appliances in the granite countertop or whether the kitchen or the master bedroom gets refurbished or you know you put new shit in or new light fixtures it's going to be on his time schedule if you go out there and you get with a patriarch and you're dating hypergamously but see if you get with pookie right pookie is a pookie is a byproduct of the matriarchy so he's already got matriarchal mindset so all you got to do is get him to share the money with you. You go off, do whatever the fuck you want to do with the money that he broke you off, right? You you go and you have his baby. So now you got the 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 satisfaction of oh I'm a mother and 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 all the all the the the, the shit that women get from being a mother. You know, good men we don't we don't we don't get that from being a father. You know, I'm not saying you don't get any sort of satisfaction from being a father, but I'm saying men have a totally different feel because at any given time, a child can be taken away from us. You know, the women can kind of bet on the idea that a child is not going to be taken away from her. You, you want to see a, 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 a psychologically and emotionally fucked up woman? Show me a woman who's lost custody of her kids. That woman is fucked up. That woman is fucked up. Men expect to lose custody. We expect for the courts to be biased as hell towards us. Okay, Mr. Jackson, this is what I'm going to do, right? That's how the judges talk to you and shit. But, um, I mean, it's, 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 it's interesting looking at it. You know what I mean? But I honestly, I wish the slander would stop. You know, I'm tired of black women always playing the victim, you know, when it comes to this shit. And they are literally making unilateral decisions like Ebony K. Williams. They're literally saying, I I'm going off and I'm doing this and this is what I want to do. And it's like, OK, cool. You want to make your decisions, right? Feminism, equality. OK, make your decisions. But you're not free of the consequences, you know, especially when those consequences involve bringing another person into the world. I mean, how are you going to sit there? You wanted to be you wanted to engage in autonomy. You thought you could run off and do whatever the fuck you wanted to do. Then you found out it was 10 times harder than what you thought it was. Right. And then you're going to run back and you're going to blame the guy that you had. hit. You did not have the intent that he would be a part of the child's life. That was your goal. That's why you got with him. Cause he's cause he's reckless, right? He's gonna give you a baby off of the strength of, of nothing and not having a proper foundation. Right? You're not gonna get that from Mr. Responsible. You're not gonna get that from the lane. You're not gonna get you're not gonna get that from the square. You're not gonna get that from any black man who's disciplined. Any black man is not just gonna that, that, that that's disciplined is not just gonna fuck you on some oops, you know, oh, you know, I just didn't have a condom and I ran up and yeah, I know there's some idiots out there. There's always exceptions. But generally speaking, and if you want to have a baby tomorrow, that that's not the guy to get with. That's not the guy to get because he ain't going to run up in you raw like that. 
you know, because he knows. I mean, there's all the evidence in the world how much of a trap that is, how much of a problem, you know, that is. You know, when it comes to, you know, having these babies and, and, and what that means in the legal system, in the court system. We men have it's like it's like being a cow in a slaughterhouse and you're watching the, the cows in front of you get slaughtered. And then it's like, oh, I'm, I'm not going to fight. I'm not going to try to resist. I'm not going to try to run in the other direction. Like, hell no. You're just sitting there watching, watching men, you know, get taken out by the guillotine and you're just standing in line. You're just going to stand in line and watch it happen. No, fuck no. Absolutely not. And the thing is, is what makes it worse is black women in social media. Oh, my God. Y'all just come on the Internet just telling all y'all secrets, all the bullshit that y'all do. Y'all just coming out and just I mean, all the women that call Kevin Samuel's show and we we sitting there horrified, horrified at the responses coming from these women. And all those videos are still up. <laughs> Kevin, I know my cookies is worth it. I know, I'm over here in freaking podank tennessee with, with 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 two kids you know what i mean and i'm overweight you know what's your dress size you know what i mean overweight you know just past their prime not looking good and i'm i'm looking for a man that makes multiple six figures kevin what these, these women are delulu 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 you know, and it's sad because, and that's why, like, the whole conversation is all, if you notice, like, the whole conversation is always about mothers, like, in the space, because we have an abundance of single moms that are back on the dating market. I said that shit when I first came online. I was like, what is up with all these goddamn single moms? It's like, you can't throw a rock without hitting one. Where are they coming from? They should be married. They should be off the market. They should have a ring on their finger. I, I as the, the single childless man, I should be the one feeling some type of way. I should be out there, oh, man, I need to get my shit together because I won't be respected by these other well-to-do married black men in the community. Let me, let me go and rush to get my shit together so that I can be accepted, you know, by the men that I look up to. Wrong, wrong. No, that don't happen. Nah, it's, it's a bunch of fucking single moms out here. Baby mamas out here. It's fucked up. You know, but what these women want, what these women want is they want their autonomy. Autonomy is the key word. Put that shit on a shirt. Autonomy. Black women want their autonomy. They do not want to have to negotiate with you for their survival. They do not want to have to abide by your rules and your regulations, even if you are paying for it. Don't get it twisted. They love money. They love, they, they, they want it and they prefer it. But if it means that it's got to come with your, 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 uh, 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 your thiefdom, no, they don't want that shit. Absolutely not. They'd rather deal with Pookie because Pookie got, he's either got he's fast money, legal money, you know, he's more free with his money because it comes in so fast, right? Okay, so what? He's fucking that other bitch over there. Good. Go. Oh, he got another bitch pregnant? Good. Because that means that he's not going to be all up under me trying to rule me. Good. You know, and, and I know as people sit there and they think that like, oh, there's just no way black women think like bullshit. All you got to do is sit there and listen. We have... What, 15 years of these conversations? 15 years of the shit. And, when it's, and again, when you go back and you listen to the originals, and I know my other channels, you know, in purgatory right now, but I'm saying when you go back and you listen to clips like, uh, you know, videos like Cat Fu, and you listen to Don Nicole Leon up there, and it's just her belligerence. And her confidence at what she's saying. I have the first say so and the last so say so. You know, when she was like, in every Native American culture, the woman, you know, you know, she 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 moves the storm, you know, because a woman, you know, we're like cats. We don't like to move. You know, when it's the moving time, you know what I mean? All the dumb shit that she was saying. Then the other woman that that was on there, you know what I mean? You know, freaking, you know, uh, you know, I know a woman who built his queen a house and moved 
all her motherfuckers in. I don't even know what that's supposed to mean. Moved all her motherfuckers in. What does that mean? What what does that mean? Like 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 the mindset is is just mind boggling. You know what I mean? You know, and the cat was trying to break the shit down. You know what I mean? She was like she was like you know uh you know you know he, you know he he. He, uh, you know, he assumes the position and he becomes king of the household. And Cat was like, men do not become kings in other people's castles. The fuck are you talking about? You know, she then she got mad. You know, what do you mean? In all matriarchies, the woman gives him his kingship. In all matriarchies. This is the woman talking about two captains on a ship. You know, a non again, nonsense. All of this is designed to just basically get, you know, this 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 Franken nigga, you know, type of black man, you know, who's got enough resources to not be a burden, not be a leech, but doesn't have enough, you know, power, you know, to control the situation. If they can get it out of Pookie, they'll get it out of Pookie. If they can get it out of a lame, educated lame beta, they'll get it out of the educated lame beta. But at the end of the day. They are not trying to live these traditional, I follow a black man because, you know, he's holding it down and he's a leader and I respect the black man and, and we're going to have a black Wakanda and, and, and I'm going to play my role and be his support uh, mate. And all. No, no, they're not trying to do that. They're not trying to do that. And then y'all wonder why you got so many black men that like they don't feel that connection to you. And they out here looking, you know, at other races of women on the other side of the fence. Y'all need to stop lying to yourselves and, and, and pretending like like you all offer black men the most. You all need to stop lying to yourselves and acting like you're the most cooperative women on the face of the planet. It's just that black men are just self-hating and colorist. And that's the only reason why, you know, uh, like why, you know, black women are single moms and black men are not getting it. Bullshit. Y'all have spoken to. That's the beauty of the Internet, because all this shit is up there. All the Ebony K. Williams. I wouldn't lie to you, Charlemagne. I wouldn't lie to you, Charlemagne. You know, but Ebony K. Williams is going to be in L.A. Ebony K. Williams is going to be, you know, at the lawyers conference in the South Florida. You know, I'm like, well, so so if you so we're, we're over here talking about truck drivers and dust. But yet when it comes to the guy with the two week vacation in the south of France, the conversation shifts over to, well, I wouldn't be there. I wouldn't be there anyway because I got better shit to do. But yet black women come online and start wailing and screaming about treatment. Like, how can I treat you better if you wouldn't show up because you're you you feel some type of way because I got shinier things than you? How am I supposed to treat you better than you can treat yourself when you're running away from uh, my treatment because my better treatment comes with a power dynamic that you don't like? See, this goes back to what we used to talk about pedestal oppression, pedestal oppression. Why is it pedestal oppression? Pedestal oppression is when a woman feels oppressed because she can't define the pedestal that she's on. Pedestal freedom would be a situation where fat women get to dictate to men that a morbidly obese woman is actually desirable. That's pedestal freedom. Pedestal oppression is where Men build women a pedestal to elevate women, right, and give them all the validation that they want and put them in the spotlight and everything else. But we only put the women that we find desirable in the spotlight. It doesn't apply to all women. It applies to the women that we think are most desirable. We built the pedestal. We get to put what's up there. Okay, but see, the women, they don't like that. Feminists don't like that. That's a part of misogyny and that's a part of, you know, um, you know, chauvinism and 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 what's what's the other word that I'm looking for? The evil patriarchy and the denigration and objectification of women's bodies. Right. And notice it's not a matter of they're mad that that men are objectifying women's bodies. No, they're mad that men are defining the bodies that men want to objectify. Because when these women go up there and they want to put 300 pound women up there, 
you know, and plus size and, and, and everything else. And I don't particularly have a problem with plus size. Depends on how you want to define it. But when they put things up there that clearly we know that they're not, that, that men are not interested. I'm like, what are you doing? And black women are the worst when it comes to this. They're the most egregious because like, it's like black women's beauty is already under attack. And then they try to be all diverse with the, with their promotion. And I'm like, you need to put your best forward. Why are you co-signing all this? Oh, we want to have diver- the, the fucking the white beauty standard is not established based off of diversity of their own image. The white beauty standard is a very narrow beauty standard that is Eurocentric. What you need is you need a black beauty standard that is also narrow and focused. But, you know, you'll get into arguments with people about that. They'll jump up and they'll tell you that, oh, well, you know, we need to have all type of diversity and everything else like that. And then and then again, it's like how like Ferrari maintains its brand integrity because Ferrari does an extensive background check. Ferrari won't just let anybody get a Ferrari. You know, you got to be somebody to get a Ferrari. All these little young rappers, you know why they're riding around in McLarens and shit like that? Because they can't get a Ferrari. They can get a Lamborghini because Lamborghini is also not exclusive like that. Some people can't stand it. Jay Leno refuses to get Ferrari, shit like that. Some people, that shit pisses them off. But at the end of the day, Ferrari doesn't give a fuck because it maintains its it's 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 mystique it maintains you know it's it's identity as an exclusive luxury brand right that's what it maintains you see that's why it does that bullshit you know same thing with like hermes and all these fake ass lines trying to make it look there's nobody in the store but they got these fake ass lines you know got people waiting outside or that brand i forget what it was was it lululemon the one that was like, we don't want fat people wearing our shit. That's why we make it extra, extra small because you got to be anorexic to wear it. Yeah, they keep their shit exclusive. You know, y'all can talk about how unfair and unjust it is. Everybody else is still going to buy that shit. Black women pick the wrong time to try to be, quote unquote, diverse when they haven't established their own, uh, 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 you know, competitive you know, a a beauty promotion, so to speak. But that's a whole nother conversation. But yeah, Um, yeah, I'm pretty much done with this video. I just needed to share that. I need people to really understand, you know, what the autonomy aspect really means. When you, when you view all the, when you listen to all these videos, all these future TikTok videos, Instagram videos, YouTube shorts, all, when you see these clips popping up, and you're listening to these women, right? And they're talking about, oh, it's dust and da 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 And, and nigga, you need to pay for me. And not when you, when you hear all this stuff, just keep autonomy in the back of your mind because that's really what all this is about. All these arguments, all this smoke and mirrors, all this bullshit. They want to maintain their autonomy, which is why the baby, the baby having the baby is more of a priority than getting married because in marriage black women feel that they would lose their autonomy and this goes from the ebony k williams to the oprah winfrey's to the girl on episode 57 of we need to talk right talking about you know i'm I'm gonna have my house and he's gonna have his house like what the what are you talking about but you know this is what it is but anyway, I'm done with this video. Less than an hour, just shy of it. So that's my video, SWP. Don't forget to comment, share, like, and subscribe.